everyone. Today I'm going to make a tomato pie. Actually, I'm going to make two of them because I'm going to double this recipe. And I just wanted to show you briefly how to start out. We're going to cut up. You can see here, I've already got two cut up. I've probably got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more tomatoes. One pie takes three to five. So I've got two. I think I've got enough to make two pies, no problem. In fact, I may go grab one more tomato to throw in just to make sure. But I wanted to make sure that you guys knew what I was doing so that you could see this. And then I'm going to continue on and get it done. And then I'll come back and show you the rest of the recipe. So basically, you take your tomatoes, and these are, of course, fresh from the garden. But you could probably use store-bought ones. If you do try to use store-bought ones, I would say use the Romas because they're meatier and usually they have a little bit better flavor to them. Um, but if you've got home grown ones or you have access to a farmer's market, I would suggest you try that because they are so delicious. And basically you just take your tomato, split it in half, and then um, get all of the juice out of it. And you just keep doing this with all of your tomatoes, get all the juice out of them. And when we got all the juice out of them, then we're gonna cut them up pretty finely. And we're gonna put about a teaspoon of salt on them and mix it up and put them in the freezer, refrigerator, I'm sorry, and just let them sit for a little while and let that, um, salt draw out that, that water. So I'm gonna finish these up, I'll chop them up and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm gonna show you this last tomato. Cut it up. Get the juices out of it. This is one of my Romas that I grew. They're actually a lot larger when you grow them fresh than they are when you get them at the grocery store. Um, but the same thing that holds true as far as they're much more meatier. See, there's that's all the juice that was in that. The rest of that is just total meat. And so they're great for any of your recipes that you're going to use as far as canning goes. Also, you can find lots of recipes for this online, and you'll find different um, ways to make it online. Most of the, re well, I won't say most of the recipes. I actually got this recipe to begin with from my sister, Kate Robler Bowler Jack, and she posted the recipe. And then, you know, I thought, man, that sounds really good. I'm going to try that. And then I went back to her page, and I couldn't find it. So I'd sent her a message and said, you know, let me have that recipe again. I really want to try that. <clears throat> In the meantime, she was cutting her, her hair and didn't get my message for a while. So I'm probably one of the most, <clears throat> most impatient people you'll see. So I decided to find one on the internet, which I did. Um, and again, they're all mostly the same. Um, you might have a little bit of a variation in the spices that you put in. Uh, the biggest thing that I noticed was the difference in the preparation of the tomatoes because a lot of people will score their tomatoes on the bottom and drop them in some cold or sorry, some boiling water for a minute and it lets the, the um, peel come off really easy and so they'll peel tomato their tomatoes before they do this which is a great idea uh, i am a impatient person and i happen to love tomatoes so when i decided to do this i thought you know what i'm chopping up my fresh tomatoes and i'm not gonna peel them we're just gonna see what happened my husband and i both love this dish just this way so i can't imagine me actually taking the extra step to peel the tomatoes but at some point I may try it. From this point, you're gonna put, let me grab a, a uh, 
measuring spoon and some salt, you are going to put one tablespoon of salt and it doesn't have to be perfect. Sprinkle that over your tomatoes. Take a spoon and stir those up really good. Now you can see the bowl as it is right now. We're gonna let these marinate in the salt for, I'm gonna say a good hour. And I'll be back and you will be surprised at how much water is going to be in this bowl. See you soon. Alrighty, I'm back. Now we're going to pre-bake these pie shells, not totally through, because this is a pie. And I'm saying pie, it's going to be more like a quiche. It's not sweet at all. <clears throat> But once they're prepared and filled, they're going to go back into the oven for another 50 minutes or so. So you don't want to cook them completely through and completely brown, but you do want to cook them just a hair so that you'll end up having a <clears throat> crisp crust at the end. Now, as you can see, I'm taking a fork and piercing the sides and the bottom of this crust just a little bit. And what that's going to do is help prevent it from um, puffing up too much. You don't, you know, you don't want it to puff up too much because you want to have all that space for your filling. Now you can use pie weights if you'd like. Um, and what I'm probably gonna do is the old fashioned way. Because I tend to do a lot of things the old fashioned way. And that is back in the day. First of all, if you don't know what pie weights are, pie weights are little ceramic beads. Um, they can come in different sizes and shapes. Usually they're you know, kind of a bean shape almost. They're about the size of a marble. If you took a regular size marble, not a cat's eye or a jumbo, but a regular size one and maybe flattened it just a little bit, pie weights are usually almost an oblong and kind of flat. And basically they're ceramic. Their only purpose is to put weight into this pie shell so that it doesn't puff up too much. Sorry, there's a few things out of my pantry that decided to make their way to the floor. Thank goodness they didn't break. If you think about pie weights or anything that you're gonna put in your pie shell, if you want to have just a little bit of parchment paper down so that it doesn't stick to the pie shell, the pie crust itself. And it doesn't have to be completely filled because you're just going to put some of these on the bottom. Cut that in half. I'm gonna turn it over so it doesn't flip quite as much. And then I'm gonna use good old beans. Now, these beans will work fine. They're basically the same size. The more you use them, the better they'll be. <clears throat> you cannot cook these and eat these after using them this way. But a pound of pinto beans or whatever kind of bean you decide to use, I use pintos because they're cheap, <clears throat> is very inexpensive. So I can use this 
99 cent or dollars, whatever it was, pound of beans that I bought. Probably not even that expensive. And use it over and over and over again. Or I can buy pie weights for, you know, however much they are. And I'm sure they're like anything else. You can buy cheaper ones or you can buy more expensive ones. But they're not going to be 99 cents. <clears throat> and this works fine. So when I'm done with these, I'll pour these into a container and I'll keep them for the next time I want to do a pile. One of those little money-saving tricks like I was telling you about. All right, now these are going to go in to my oven, 375. Four. I'm going to let them go about eight minutes. The pie crust itself takes 11 to 14 minutes. So because I don't want it completely done, I'm only going to go eight. And I'll meet you back here in eight minutes. Alrighty, my timer has gone off and so our pre-baked shells are ready. We're gonna take those out. And as you can see, they have puffed up just a little bit around the sides. That's okay, it's gonna kinda of, uh, go down. Sorry about that, we're not getting a good picture. There we go. They've puffed up just a little bit around the sides and that's totally okay. This is not a liquid pie. It's more, I said, like a quiche, except instead of quiche, instead of eggs and the mixture that you would make for quiche, cream, and whatever, uh, this is just gonna be a uh, mayo and cheese and some hot sauce and that goes on top of the onions and the tomatoes that you use for your pie. So it doesn't melt down and it's not going to be liquidy and fall out of the pie. So if you've got some cracks in your shell, don't worry about it. You know, it's gonna be just fine. Now what I'm gonna do real quickly, actually I'm not gonna do anything for a minute. I'm just gonna let those cool just a little bit and then we'll be right back to deal with that and the rest of the pie. What I'm gonna do real quick is take these tomatoes and let's see if you can see those. Now, can you see all the liquid in there? Prior to this video, I showed you what the, the <clears throat> bowl looked like. And then I put the salt on it. Well, now you can see all that liquid has come out. So now we just need to drain that. And we'll put that in our strainer and let it sit and drain. And as you can see, it's dripping just a little bit. I don't know if you can see the drips, but not a whole lot. So then I take two of my half sheets of paper towels, fold it in two and fold it over again. So you've now you've got a four ply square put that on top just lay it right on top of your tomatoes and press now I could use a French press or an onion press or you know a French press is for coffee I'm using the wrong terminology <clears throat> I could use other ways of getting the extra moisture out of this but personally I find this just as as well. Now y'all don't freak out when I'm not wearing gloves. Um, I have washed my hands and I'm cooking for my family. <clears throat> if I were cooking for relatives and a big, you know, to do or whatever, I would be using a little bit more sanitary, <coughs> excuse me, practices, but this is for me and my family. Um, and it, as I said, my hands are clean. I've washed, washed them many times. Now I've noticed myself grabbing my hair occasionally and that's not good either, but my hair is clean as well. It's just up. So again, this is for my family. 
if I were going to be showing you proper techniques, first of all, I'd probably have to learn them, but I would certainly be using those practices. Now, I'm just gonna press, you saw, saw that, or hopefully you saw it, I wasn't, I was talking and not paying attention. As you press down on this, this paper towel fills up with liquid and you've got liquid coming out the bottom. So I've already done it twice, but I'm going to wring it out a third time. And you can see how much water is coming out of there. I'm gonna set that down on there one more time and I'm gonna press into it. And then I'm just gonna let that sit while my pie shells cool off just a little bit because the rest of this recipe goes really quickly. There's not much to it. So I'll be back probably in 15 or 20. I just wanna give them some time to really cool off. Be right back. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and take these beans out of my pie shells. And what I do is I have a clean old coffee container and I'm gonna pour those right into there and then I have them for the next time I need pie weights. Now, the very bottom of this pie shell is still just a tad bit moist. I'm gonna stick this back in for only two minutes. And that way, I'm gonna get that bottom just a little bit more done, a little bit more crisp, and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, here we go. So I put my shells back in just a little bit. You can tell they're more like the same color of everything else. They feel about the same, so we're going with that. Now we're gonna assemble these. By the way, when it comes to the crust, I meant to say earlier, I am not an aficionado of crusts. I tend to use frozen crusts. I think they taste good and I don't really notice the difference. And I've got so much going on in my mind, I don't have time to do homemade crust. Now I'm sure there are lots of you who are going to want to challenge me on that. Please save your time. You use and do whatever crust you like best. Um, my whole point in these videos is just to give you some ideas. It's not to tell you this is the only way to do anything and this, or for that matter, this is the best way to do it. So you use what you like. I'm using Pillsbury deep dish frozen pie crusts. And to that on the bottom of them, I'm putting about a tablespoon of finely diced onion. I have a chopper. A lot of you probably do have choppers. Use your fine dice setting on it. You want it to be fine. And it's kind of one of those things you can use or not use as much as you want. It's <clears throat> to your liking. Do you like onion? Do you really like onion? Put more in there. If you aren't are concerned about it, lay off a little bit and make the pie and then you can change your measurements with the next one. I tend to do that a lot. A lot of things that I tend to make are guesstimates. Um, I came from a family with, my mother was a cook for many, many, many years. She was not a chef, but she was a good cook. And I learned to cook the way she did, which was a handful of this and a handful of that. Um, now, sorry, my head's scratching and I'm bound and determined not to actually scratch it. Um, as I have gotten older and my palate has changed, I find a lot of the things that my mother cooked kind of bland. Um, she didn't use a lot of spice. She couldn't stand mushrooms. There were certain things that she just didn't do and so I love garlic. Almost everything I fix has garlic in it, except for this pie. Um, and now I've gotten off on a tangent, so let's get back to the pie. Anyway, the whole point of that was that I will give you guesstimates on 
um, actual measurements a lot. Sometimes I can give you exact measurements, but certain things, and this happens to be one of them, that it's however much you like. Now on the tomatoes, you can see what they look like now. They've been pressed down. And when I start to fluff them up a little bit, there they are. They've still got some moisture in them, but not too much. And so you're just gonna half that amount between the pies. Now again, you can use canned tomatoes if you so choose. Um, just make sure you drain all that water off of it. And I, I can't verify what it's gonna taste like because I'm using my fresh tomatoes from my garden. So I know these are packed with flavor and I'm not, I, my sister tends to call them the water bombs that you buy from the grocery store. So I don't know <clears throat> how they would taste. I would say use the plums if, or the romas, however you wanna call them. Um, they will tend to have more meat. And I think I showed you that earlier while I was cutting up a tomato. Just basically kind of divide these between the two. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you're done. I, I think also earlier I had mentioned, um, I just chopped mine up, took the cores out, um, cut off any little blemishes, but I didn't take the time to peel them. Some of the recipes that you'll see will tell you to peel your tomatoes. It's kind of a personal preference. I have made this pie now four times, I think. Um, and I just got the recipe like four days ago. So I've made pies every day. Um, it's delicious. And so my husband and I have just kind of been addicted to it. And I hope that you enjoy it too. But like most things that I, I cook, part of it is just, you know, make it your own. Do things that you think will be good. My only thought process is maybe do it the way that I'm doing it the first time. And then that gives you a base that you can decide, okay, that was good, but I think it would be better if I did this to your own liking. Now, the one, one little experiment I'm doing today is I'm making one of these with fresh basil out of my garden. And I'm saying one of them, they're both with fresh basil out of my garden, but this is basil that I've actually dried myself. And so I didn't have quite enough fresh out there to be able to do <clears throat> both pies. And as you know, you use twice as much fresh herb as you do a dried herb. So that was probably a tablespoon of fresh basil and that was probably a half to three quarters of a teaspoon, maybe a couple more shakes of dried. Now I don't have any fresh oregano so I'm going to put just a little bit of fresh oregano on both of them too. And this is another thing, if you have certain spices that you like better, then by all means make those or use those, I'm sorry. Um, in fact, I was thinking the other day, chives would be good in this, but I've already got fresh onion in there. So <clears throat> I'll use that for another day and try that. You'll find me in these cooking videos thinking out loud a lot. That just happens to be my mode of <clears throat> figuring out other recipes or other things that I might try with it and using a base type recipe, as I was saying. I hope you try this. Maybe try it the way that I'm doing it the first time and then absolutely make it your own. All right, now what we've got is Bear with me one second while I get some more pepper. Mm. 
All right. This is four cups, actually, it's six cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Now, you, if you don't like sharp cheddar cheese, cheese and, but you like mild, use mild. If sharp's too much for you, but you like medium, use medium. Um, we happen to like sharp cheese, and this is a recipe that because of the spices in it, it's not like the cheese slaps you in the face. So, again, use what you want. We use sharp cheddar. To this, because it's a doubled recipe, I'm putting a teaspoon of pepper. So if you were making one pie, it would be a half a teaspoon. And I'm going to put in some hot sauce. My last pie that I made, I had about a tablespoon of hot sauce in it. And I really couldn't tell, taste it. So this is a double recipe. I'm putting three tablespoons in, so that would be increasing my fryer amount to one and a half tablespoons instead of one. You don't want it hot, but you do want some flavor in there other than the cheese and the pepper. To that was two cups of mayo. Now, I know that's a lot of mayo, it's a lot of cheese. This isn't necessarily a dietetic recipe, but it's delicious. To help the calorie part though, I use light mayonnaise. Now, it's not, I don't use it specifically for this recipe. This is just what I have in my house. I think it tastes as well as regular and anything I can do to cut a few calories here and there, I'm gonna do it. Uh, my family likes it, um, so. You use what you want to use. <laughs> what you're trying to do is basically mix this all together. It's still going to be a thick ball, basically. It's going to go on top of the pot. And once you get it all mixed together, you're basically done. Oops, I'm making a mess. How unlike me. That's a joke, everyone knows I'm really messy. All right, we've got it all mixed together. Let's use one more utensil. Get that off there, just so I can mix it all in again. All right. Now, Smash that in your bowl, and it's all about the same level, because you want to divide this in two, and basically have half of the mixture for each pie. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna go half the seeds right there. And this mixture goes right on top of your pies. Just smooth these out a bit. And I say a bit, you really want to smooth it out so that your cheese mixture basically makes a seal with that crust. Just move it over and flatten it out. There's really nothing hard about this pie. <clears throat> and it's really not even that time consuming, but it is absolutely delicious. And I think that if you take the time to make it, you are going to be surprised and find yourself making it quite often. 
the good thing about it is it ends up being very light. Earlier I said it was kind of like a quiche. And sort of it is, kind of, but even a quiche, it's lighter than a quiche. And you'd think that maybe with all that cheese it would be heavier, but it's not. My husband is a musician. He tends to come home late at night, usually late at night. Depends on the, the end of the gig, but 10, 11 o'clock quite often. And he's hungry and knows he shouldn't eat, but there's he's hungry. So I try to keep one of these in the oven. He loves to have those at night because he feels like he's had something to eat but it's not heavy on his tummy. So, we now take our pies. Let's turn you around here just a little bit. We've dropped our oven temperature to 350, and we're gonna put those right in our oven. And we're going to set our timer for 50 minutes. That's 50, five zero. When we get to the end of 50 minutes, I'm gonna come in here and check on them. We're gonna see what the color looks like. Um, more than likely, they'll be ready to go. They may need another five minutes or so, but we'll see. I'll see you back then. Alrighty, our time's up. Let's open this thing up and see what we got. see those. They could even go just a, a hair darker if you'd like. Uh, I believe earlier I said 350 or 50 minutes. I take that back. I'm looking at my oven and it's 375. So if you've been cooking along with me, I apologize. Just put yours back in the oven for another until they get to the brownness you want. If they're fine for you, they're, it's fine. Everything's cooked inside, so no worries there. I'm gonna let these cool off. It's gonna take a good hour probably. Some of the recipes will tell you 30 minutes, some will tell you an hour and a half. So I split the baby and I let them cool for an hour before I try to cut one. What I'm gonna to do today is let one cool completely, wrap it and freeze it, and then I'll cut the other one so y'all can see what this looks like once it's done. Um, I hope to see you back in just a, another little bit. Alrighty, I'm back. <clears throat> it's probably been an hour and a half or so. I am going to go ahead and take care of these. One of these is going to go into a food saver bag. And I'm going to put it in the freezer. This is my food saver. Um, if you are familiar with food savers at all, they are wonderful products. Um, this one happens to be about 20 years old. So you can't find that brand or that model anymore, but I love it. Um, here is our one that we are going to cut and try a piece of. Let's bring this a little bit closer. This is still warm, so it's still just a bit gooey, but that's okay, it's gonna be good. I don't have a pie server, so, and this is a thin little sliver, so I'm gonna use my frosting spatula. All right. Now, can y'all see the inside of that? So you can see the onions and the tomatoes and the uh, spice and their herbs on the bottom. And then you've got that layer of cheese on the top. Howdy. 
Now take a bite of this and see what we think. It's a winner, definitely a winner. And the addition of the hot sauce, extra hot sauce made a huge difference. You use whatever hot sauce that you prefer. I happen to use Louisiana just because I think I've said many times I'm old and I, I tend to do things out of habit. That was my mom's favorite, my dad's favorite. And so I've just used it all these years when I'm cooking something and it calls for hot sauce. I use all kinds of other hot sauces too. In fact, I, I make a salsa that's pretty good. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you'll enjoy the pie. If you have any comments, as far as other um, things I might add to it, make it a little bit different, please put them in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any negative comments, just keep them to yourselves. I hope you like this, this video. I hope you like our page. And please subscribe. See you next time. By the way, folks, I just want to get, whoops, hold on, sorry about that. I just want to give you guys a personal review. This is the first time I had ever had the tomato pie. This is the first time Tammy's tried it. Um, and Well, actually, not first time, second or third time, because we've had a couple already. Um, amazing. Uh, if you like tomatoes, if you like cheese, uh, they don't taste like pie. To me, it's um, more like a quiche. It's almost like a quiche. Uh, almost like a quiche, yeah. In fact, I've gotten to where I put... Tammy makes really good homemade salsa, and so I put a little bit of salsa on it also. Amazing. Um, just, and, they're, and, it, and it's light. It doesn't, it doesn't fill you up. Um, as I've said many times, I'm a musician, so a lot of times when I get home late at night, I'm hungry, whatever, so I want something, and unfortunately, quite often, I'll gravitate to a sandwich or something, which really isn't good at freaking 11 o'clock at night. But to have a small piece of this, it's light. It doesn't feel overfilling or overbearing. It's really good. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to throw that in the middle of her video. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs>